Hello and welcome to another Board Crazy Review. I am D. I am joined as ever by my partners. I'm Graham. And I am uh, Captain William of the Old Sean. Of the Old Sean. All oh, right. He's named after him now. I'm not the captain. Uh, captain is my the... first name. Oh. William's yeah. your last name. Yes, Captain William. This is a Kickstarter game. Uh, it's coming to Kickstarter in September, so not long to wait. Uh, we'll have more on uh, that at the end of the video, but I just wanted to mention it now. And uh, yeah, we have a preview playthrough of it that I think Dee's gonna mention. I think I'm not gonna do it this time. I'll be honest, <laughs> fun. just to mess with him. No, all right, fine. We do have a, a, a playthrough of this game. Uh, we're gonna roll my introduction where I explain the rules. Not very complicated, so th you know, if you haven't watched that yet and you don't want to, you uh, can sort of get a grasp on how the game works. Uh, so here that goes. Salty Dogs is a card game for two to four players from Berserker Art, which is still in development. In Salty Dogs, each player is in control of a crew of five animal pirates who are engaged in a battle with the other players' crews. The winner is simply the last player standing. At the start of the game, the crew cards are shuffled up and five are dealt to each player. The players then assign them to their positions. There is a captain, a first mate, and then three generic pirates. The remaining crew cards are then shuffled into the rest of the deck, and then five of those cards are also dealt to each player, and these comprise the player's starting hands. On a player's turn, they draw one card from the draw pile, and then they play one card from their hand. Cards allow players to do things like attack opponents, cure illnesses of their own crew members, and also refill empty crew slots if they have a crew card in hand. There are also defense cards, which can be played on other players' turn to block certain cards from taking effect. Players' crew members get attacked from left to right, starting with their lowest ranking pirate and then going up to the captain. The first mates are immune to mutiny attacks, which means they cannot be stolen by their players, while the captains are immune to both mutinies and illnesses, which means they can only be defeated with an attack. However, once a player's captain has been successfully attacked, they are out of the game, and there can be only one. Okay, gentlemen, so that is... More or less how you play Salty Dogs. Card game, trying to knock each other out. Capturing each other's pirates. Yes. Giving each other illnesses. Yep. Animals. All these animals. Duking it out. Yeah. Hi, oh, everyone. Handsome Charles. There's young Sean. Ratbeard. All the, all, the, all the heavy hitters on top right here, I tell you what. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about Salty Dogs uh, from Berserker Art. It's one of these things. You, you, you know, we get a game sent to us every once in a while. This is an example. And this yeah. was, and yeah, and so we got this one, and, I, you know, I read the rules in the, that are provided in here. It's a little, like, double-sided piece of paper, and I'm, I, I'm left unenthused uh, after I finish it, and even, there's, there's even some confusion. So coming into this game, I wasn't uh, particularly optimistic about uh, my feelings towards it, but after having actually played it, it's, it's quite a bit better than I, I would have thought, actually. Um, with I, more going on than you might think. You get a game in a box this big, you're yeah. not expecting too much from no. it. Maybe that's where it comes from, but, um, because I, you're right, when I first saw it, I was like, what, did, where's the box? <laughs> like, you're looking around for the where's rest the of game? it. game? But the little box actually packs quite a punch. There's a yeah. good bit in this game that I think is, uh, more, almost depth than I thought there would be, um, when I first learned how to how it would how it was played so yeah, there's a good variety to the cards there's not too much that it becomes overwhelming or sort of inconvenient as mm -hmm. far as like strategy mm -hmm. goes but there's enough that you can you can play the game in different ways oh sort absolutely of. yeah yep. um yeah i feel like all the all the cards provided every single type has it as a use I don't think there's any card where you're like, this, I can't do anything with this. It's pointless. I mean, there might be certain circumstances where they're useless. Yeah. Right? But there, it's, all, it, it's actually good in this game to have a variety and you know, keep different cards in your hand. Right. Because they're, yeah, they, like, they're, they, all, they all seem equally useful in their own way. When I first found out we were, this was going to be sent to us and I was looking at the rules, I was immediately intrigued by the artwork, which I'm sure we'll touch on later. Yeah. But... The, yeah, it seems so simple and a little unclear, and like you guys have just said, it, it's, uh, it plays really well uh, for this kind of game. It's mm -hmm. kind of like, take that, you know, I put yeah. out a card, you put out a card, mm -hmm. we just destroy each other's crews. And, you know, given the pirating theme, it feels, you know, appropriate the way the game plays. This isn't, you know, obviously a game that's kind of 
built around chaos. Not cha it's controlled, you know, it's designed, yeah. but... I mean, there's, um, there's randomness for sure. Oh, yeah. There's luck yeah, and randomness. Course. Yeah, car games, there's a and, lot of times. And you know, actually, one thing it's it's fun about this game, and some other games we've played, but this one specifically, is, I mean, you guys know me, I love games where you're trying to sabotage each other. <laughs> no sarcasm there at all, but this game is essentially built around sabotaging, so you don't actually feel bad when it happens to you, or yeah. when you're doing it to someone. Yeah. It's just kind of expected. Yeah. And so, I think that gives you a little bit of relief I would say or a little bit of you don't feel permission yeah, yeah to yeah. to do it and so it's it um it feels good to do it every once in a while and they they I think wrapped it up with a with a really nice theme to do that and so it's um yeah I, I that was also, also another it's thing not that stood out. yeah it's not necessarily beneficial to gang up on someone in this game. no it's not yep. you might knock them out but you might leave yourself vulnerable in the same exactly in the same time I was shocked at how well that worked because yeah. like I, I, one thing I've always oh, feared about about card games yeah. in general, or games like this, where you're, you're the it's it's like nonstop action where you're attacking people, is that I was afraid that especially with three players, one player might get ganged up on, mm -hmm. or there would be a, you know like uh, someone would start to feel like a grudge because they keep on getting hit. And then I, what I what I realize is that one, you, the grudge thing doesn't really happen. It might happen with certain personality types, but at least with us, uh, it didn't happen because like Graham said, it's you sort of have permission to just. Attack, attack, mm. attack, and kill. Well, capture your opponent's pirates and make them ill, and all this other thing, and all these other things. But, um, but also, like, then kind of what you hinted at, the, there is an incentive to not do that based on what cards you have in your hand and how you just because if you once the more you play this game, the more you know that if you start to gang up too much on one person, you're right. It could, it will very likely leave you more vulnerable than you even expected, yeah. and that is a you know a good part of the game's design. I think for for me, I, I, one thing that I would have liked to uh, maybe see a little bit different about this game is a little bit more use of the brig in how it's actually make it actually mm -hmm. useful in some way. Yeah. Um, maybe it helps you. I don't know. This feels like a good time to jump in and mention. Oh look, guys, we're in new clothes, by the way. It's weird that we changed. Yeah. Indeed. Mid review. But... Uh, there are a few changes coming to Salty Dogs that I uh, should mention here. They're adding a new action card called the Corrupting Gift, which will enable you to take a pirate from your own brig and add them to either your play mat or your play hand. So that's kind of what we were just talking about. Well, that's being added to the game. Thought you should know. A few more little changes that they're uh, they're doing. The color of the pirate card's border is being changed from that like same brown wood design to like a greenish color to make them a little bit more distinguishable from the action cards. That's a good change. That's a good change. Um, and for ad more advanced play, they're adding Ooh. in immunities to four of the pirates. For instance, uh, Piggy Peg Leg is going to be immune to scurvy since he's the one who makes the Piggy Peg Leg orange gumbo. Oh, mm. that's clever. And clever, Dr. Yeah. Burry Bones will be immune to the black spot because he practices voodoo. Oh. Very cool. So there's going to be some interesting little caveats. Also, they are holding a, on the Salty Dogs website, they're holding a coloring competition mm -hmm. to determine the final art for the Captain Salty Pirate card. For children. It's for children ages 6 to 12. We'll have the link for it <laughs> down below in the description. And that's it. So back to the review. Yeah, take that, five-year-olds. And I, what I was going to say, too, what I think I really like is, so, like, the main way you destroy opponents' crew members, it, um, you know, are the attack cards. Mm -hmm. You know, walk the plank, you fire cannon at them, stuff like that. Um, but I noticed a few times throughout the game how easy it could be to run out of those. Like, to, just because of either because mm -hmm. someone raids you a couple times or you just have bad luck with the draw. And um, and I honestly, I think that's what makes the illness cards so much, like, so invaluable. Like, they're very valuable to the game. Yeah. And uh, you know, in some ways, the illnesses are more effective than the attacks. Uh, there, there are situations in this game where you will actually probably even want to get attacked, even if it's a situation where you could block it with a defense right. card, because you might have a handful of crew members right. that you can't really use otherwise, yep. unless you have a space opened yep. up. So there might be times where it actually is beneficial for you to lose a, uh, a person throw a new one out there, sort of reset a little bit. Yep. Instead of, you know, having your thing filled up with a bunch of, like, six people, people who yep. you have to wait for the right, you know, healing, get, cure get card. Get a cure, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's it's horrible in this game to just have a spot that you can't use. use. Mm -hmm. Which, is, again, they put another card in here called the Stowaway. Yeah. And that's the exact purpose it's, of it, is that it just takes up a spot. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's almost it's almost worse than having a completely empty spot. Oh, it absolutely yeah. is, yeah. So it's... 
It's uh, but yeah, that's that, that is a good point. I do I do like how like the first mate and the captain have their own special sort of perks a little bit. Like first mate's immune to mut yep. mutiny and uh, captain's immune to mutiny and illness. Yeah. And given how good these cards are at explaining what they do, like you know, cute, voodoo yeah. cure for the black spot, then it like the black spot will say on the black spot card mm -hmm. it needs to be cured by voodoo. I did think it was strange though for that on the mutiny card. It didn't say, you know, can't be used against the first mate or the captain. Yeah. As that would just seem like, like, this game nailed it on it being overly um, explanatory on all the cards. Yeah, I don't know if these except are... Except for the mutiny cards. I don't know if these are, like, the final drafts of these play mats or not, but it would probably be good if they had something like that on here as well to remind right. you. So a lot of good stuff here. I do think this is definitely a game that's better the, the more players you have. Yes. Uh, three or four. This goes up to four, right? He's it goes. It's two to four. four. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I imagine with two, it's probably gonna be a bit underwhelming in that respect because there's no mystery as far as who's getting attacked there, right? You yeah. Know, exactly. It's, it's just a bloodbath yeah. with two, and it just won't duel. last long. Yeah. And it, it'll be. I think the luck part of drawing good cards will yeah. be that much more prevalent. Yeah. Exactly. It gets spaced out a bit more when you get more hands. Drawn yeah. It's def pile. definitely another weakness of the game. Um, we didn't even mention this, but Graham, I know you liked the. Uh, like the sort of, I guess you could call it the counter sabotage defense cards. Oh, or yeah. someone's like, I'm throwing a cannon, and you're like, nope, nope. Fuck. Boom, those are awesome. You use that to great effect in yes. our playthrough. Yep, and, that, and that's where I think a lot of the luck comes from in this game. That's where it just gets a little bit chaotic because yeah. you, you never know what you. At the end of our playthrough, I mean, I don't go spoil it too much, but mm -hmm. it was all came down to luck and who had those defense cards there. Mm -hmm. Um... But it was a cool little mechanic they threw into the game that added some. Yeah, and you know, using those, suspense. you are you are lowering your hand size. All right. Yeah. You know, you're you're not getting that back. Yep. Exactly. So. Okay. Well, let's talk about the art then. Um, it's you know I I don't think it's gonna be to everyone's taste. It's got I feel like a very like eighties nineties uh, kind of style to it. I was gonna say I almost have an immediate nostalgia yeah, for it's the very art. Very nostalgic for us. <laughs> Maybe younger players may not appreciate it as yeah. much. Yeah, I almost it almost looks like the art that you'd see on the box of an Animal Crackers. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I don't know. That's what. For, a for really a intense animal. Yeah, really. Yeah. Like if it was like, like the Halloween animal, I think the, the giraffe the is and the, yeah. and the monkey and I don't know. That's what came to mind immediately. But it is weird how I almost have an immediate nostalgia for this for the artwork. Yeah, Simon Bisley did the artwork for this game. He is a really well known um, like comic book artist, mm -hmm. and it shows this game has. We've played a lot of card games with really good artwork, but I don't know if we've ever played. Um, card games with artwork that's this like unique and colorful. Right. Yeah, and like you said, I, I almost like that. There's a lot going on in the in yeah. the cards. I didn't when we were playing. I didn't really take a chance to look too much at what was going on in the pictures, but uh, it, it. I think that adds a, the nice a lot little of taste to it. You know, yeah, yeah. Oh, the characters the are great. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. characters yeah, are, are great. Personality, I, and that's good because that personality on both the character cards and on the action cards sort of allow you to. You could. Like, through banter, almost build a story as yeah. you're playing. If you really wanted to role um, play it. Um, anything else? I, I like the I like the mats that they're... Yeah, I, hope, well, I hope this is the the uh, the final copy of what they're going to they're gonna do, these cloth mats here. That's... I don't know. They're, I, they're not the most convenient things, but they wrap up nicely into the box, and I think they're really cool. I, I think, in general, what we got is the final product. Yeah. Uh, um, well, I have seen stuff online where I'm having, like, a bigger box, probably, to yeah, hold yeah, this they, and stuff like this. Mm, but okay. They mentioned to yeah. us that the final product will be, like, a two-piece box. Yeah. One box will have the cards. The other box will have the play mats. Okay. okay. Yeah, so, go. yeah. So, it's a little different, but, again, mostly with the few... There will be some additional cards. The rules will be... Uh, more thorough and complete. That is necessary. Um, yeah. So, like, you know, what we got is, like, mostly the same, but it's, the finished product will be even better. Guess we should wrap it up, guys. Yeah, Get I don't scored. have much else to say. No, yeah, no. I, I mean, like, I guess we kind of covered everything. This is a surprisingly fun game. Um, it, also, it's... it's uh, This is kind of... Uh, it's, a th it's a situation where this game is... It's actually fun and interesting to play without it being at all complicated, really. Mm -hmm. like, there's not much to have to learn. Like, I kind of, I'm always comparing this in my head to like Unstable Unicorns, which is similar mechanically yeah. in the sense you're kind of, you know, trying to knock each other out. Yeah. You know, cards. But I feel like that game is a situation where like the rules are kind of muddled in some ways mm -hmm. and then it's not, I don't think it's all that fun to play. So assuming this is the product you get if when you order this on Kickstarter, I would give this a four out of five stars. Yeah, I, I, 
like we all just kind of said in the review, it's more fun than it looks at first. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, Don't judge it by its cover. De- definitely not. No, I had a great time playing this. Um, I don't have much else to say. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it two thumbs up. Ooh, level two. And you know me, guys. I like my simple games. Um, like simple and this games. one, as I think we we all sort of simple agree, simple games for a simple man. Yes. yes. This one sort of snuck up on me. Um, I'm gonna give this one. I think I'm gonna give it a a B plus. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's and that's in the overall scale of tabletop games. Like within card gaming, it's it's definitely in that like higher rung for me. I just like these this this game mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. Cool. Good. Yeah. Those are our thoughts on Salty Dogs. Again, you can look out for that uh, on Kickstarter this September. Um, thanks again to Berserker Art for sending us this in advance, letting us try it out. Yeah, specifically uh, Phil, who I spoke to. Phil. Um, he's one of the designers. This game was designed by Andy Brown, Sean McCaughey, and Phil Cairns. And they did a good job. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, you can, of course, like, comment, subscribe, share. Uh, hit the notification bell, all those, all those normal stuff. We say it every time, you know what to do. Uh, and you can also check out our social media, as always. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Graham has been on Instagram for about 26 hours a day recently, so if you want to... 27. Yeah, 27. There you go. 24. So if you want to talk to Graham, it's not really an Instagram thing, but... Uh, yeah, and then, of course, you can come back uh, this Friday for our next uh, Board Crazy playthrough. We're going from cats to dogs... To birds. <laughs> so we're yes. sticking with the animal realm. Uh, maybe a bit more realistic this time. Where do we but... even go after that? Sheep. Sheep. <laughs> There's probably a sheep-based sure game out is. there. We there can is. find one. There is one. I can think of one. Agricola? Oh, it's could... sheep, I think. Right. It's part of agriculture, probably. Well, there's sheep on the poster. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How fun. How fun. How fun. This is a great outro, guys. We, I think we're nailing, nailing it. it. Thank nailing you again it. for watching. Until the next time. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you for watching.